Malaysia launches a missile test. It sends a message to China that Malaysia will fight for the South China Sea. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Malaysia is flexing its military muscle in the South China Sea. And it's sending a clear message to China. Malaysia is no pushover. Malaysia just held six days of military drills called Taming Sari 2021. It saw the Royal Malaysian Navy carry out a rare demonstration of its anti-surface capabilities in the South China Sea, with the firing of three Exocet missiles. According to a regional security analyst, these drills would send a clear message across to other South China Sea claimants, including China, that Malaysia is no pushover, and nor is it unprepared to use force, even against the likes of China, which now has the largest navy in the world. The Chinese Communist Party claims almost the entire South China Sea, putting it in territorial conflicts with the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Brunei, and of course, Malaysia. This was Malaysia's first wartime drill since the coronavirus pandemic began last year, and it's no surprise why. At the end of May, Chinese military aircraft breached Malaysian airspace. Malaysia scrambled its own aircraft after the Chinese aircraft ignored warnings to leave. It caused a huge diplomatic fallout. Nevertheless, Chinese Coast Guard ships have since early June also been putting pressure on and harassing new Malaysian oil and gas projects in the South China Sea. And that's at least the third time since last spring. Malaysia is now seeking to buy new combat aircraft. Of course, despite Malaysia's recent military drills, they know that in order to counter an aggressive Chinese Communist Party, they need allies. Which is why, earlier this month, Malaysia joined U.S.-led military drills in Southeast Asia. In addition to Western nations like Germany and France, several other countries with competing South China Sea claims also joined, like the Philippines and Vietnam. And yes, the U.S. and Communist Vietnam are joining military drills together. That's how much everyone is concerned about China. In fact, in a recent speech in Singapore, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris had this to say. In the South China Sea, we know that Beijing continues to coerce, to intimidate, and to make claims to the vast majority of the South China Sea. Of course, there are major challenges for Malaysia if it wants to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party. More after the break. Welcome back. Malaysia is sending a clear message to China. It will fight for its territory in the South China Sea. But challenging China will be difficult. It's not enough to stand up to China militarily. China is also powerful economically and politically. China has been Malaysia's biggest trading partner for a decade. China's oil imports from Malaysia have tripled in the past year. And the coronavirus pandemic is devastating Malaysia. Parts of the country remain under lockdown, and about half of the nearly 14,000 coronavirus-linked deaths took place in the last four weeks. In fact, adjusting for population size, Malaysia's daily reported COVID cases are among the highest globally. Only about 35% of Malaysia has been fully vaccinated. The goal is to reach 60 to 70% by October, and China is more than happy to help with some very effective Chinese vaccines. And that's just the first shipment of a three and a half million dose order. Earlier this summer, Malaysia had actually announced it would stop using another Chinese vaccine, Sinovac, because they had gotten a lot more Pfizer vaccines. I guess they hope that canned Sino is better than Sinovac. But Malaysia faces another big challenge if it wants to stand up to China, its own political infighting. Last week, Malaysia got a new prime minister, the third in three years. That's not a great sign. The new prime minister is Ismail Sabri Yaakob. He was appointed by the king of Malaysia after the previous prime minister lost the support of parliament. 
The new Prime Minister now faces an immediate challenge of taming Malaysia's surging COVID infections and rising death count, as well as reviving an economy that has suffered from multiple rounds of lockdowns, all areas where China will be happy to help. For years, China has been trying to get a foothold in Malaysia through corrupt infrastructure projects as part of the Belt and Road Initiative. In 2018, I did an episode about a shady Chinese-built dam that could potentially kill thousands. I'll put a link below. But eventually, the Malaysian prime minister China was working with on these deals was convicted of corruption, which was partly tied to those Chinese deals. And his replacement wanted to scrap the China deals. But then that guy was ousted in 2020 and replaced with another guy. And this month, that other guy was replaced with the new guy, Ismail. And this new guy is part of the same political party as the original guy who was working with China and convicted of corruption. I'm simplifying things a lot, but what's important is the Chinese Communist Party uses political division for its advantage. China is putting on a friendly face for the new guy. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang congratulated the new Malaysian Prime Minister. And the Malaysia-China Chamber of Commerce welcomed him. So how will Ismail treat China? China is increasingly aggressive in the South China Sea. But China is also a potential source for COVID vaccines and economic recovery from lockdowns. All problems China caused in the first place, but you know. This is something to keep an eye on. Unless, of course, Malaysia gets another new prime minister in a few months. And now, it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Fans who support us and our efforts to expose the truth about the Chinese Communist Party by contributing to the crowdfunding website Patreon. Tony Chapkowski asks, How long for the chai -coms to build as many bombs as we have? And how long for those missile silos to be finished? Great question, Tony. China is rapidly expanding its nuclear weapons capability. The goal is to be at least on par with the United States. According to satellite images obtained by the Federation of American Scientists, China is building 110 new nuclear missile silos in Xinjiang. And just a few weeks before that, 120 other new missile silos were discovered. Now, we don't know what's in those silos. They could be filled with concrete, for all we know. But the longer this goes on, the less anyone would want to gamble about what China's nuclear capability is or isn't. Thanks for your question and your support, Tony. And big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your question on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.